We've got some important stuff to talk about today. I'll get into Peachette in a minute, but first of all, I wanted to thank you all so much for 10,000 subscribers. You know, when I started this YouTube channel, I didn't really think that we would be able to get this far with it. It was just a fun thing that I decided to do in some of my spare time, and it's really grown, and I can't thank you guys enough for this. You know, without all of your support and you guys sticking around, liking, sharing the videos, leaving your comments, that's my favorite thing to see, whether you agree or disagree with me. Me. Just all you guys sharing your ideas for what the future of Nintendo could be like and your thoughts on various games. It's just really fun to look at and interact with you guys. Whether you've been around since the beginning or the very last person who just subscribed, welcome aboard. It's only going to get better from here. I don't have too many major updates to the channel. Things are going to be staying relatively the same as they are. Maybe a couple of new series being added in there to the channel. But I'll let you guys know if any of those are going to be starting up. I just really wanted to show my gratitude for all the support from you guys and it's just amazing to see how far we've come with this channel. So let's get started with the main content of this video. Who really is Peachette? For those of you who are unaware of who Peachette is, I'll do a brief explanation. In the most recent Nintendo Direct, Nintendo showed off what everybody assumed was going to be coming to the Switch because it was heavily rumored, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe the enhanced version of New Super Mario Bros. U. I covered my thoughts about this game coming to the Switch in a previous video, so I'm not going to dwell too much on the game itself here, mostly just this new feature that's within it. So they introduced Toadette as a playable character, and you know what, I thought that made sense. Put a more recognizable character in the game as a substitute for Blue Toad, and you know what, it's pretty nice, as they wouldn't really have to do too many moveset changes or whatever. But then they revealed something else about Toadette later on in the trailer. If Toadette gets this new item called the Super Crown, she will transform into Peachette. Yes, this is a real thing. And Peachette has new abilities such as the A ability to double jump and she'll hover in the air like the normal Peach does in her appearances in 2D Mario titles. This just caught so many Nintendo fans off guard, it just got them talking about what is this character doing in this game? Well, in this video, I'm going to provide my opinion on it in a lore-based perspective, what I believe is the real reason for it, and I'm going to give my thoughts on all the other Mario stuff that was in the Direct, just because I haven't got a chance to talk about it yet, so we're compacting all that into this video. Let's start with the Mario lore. I've covered Mario lore in a few videos in the past, and you can check those out in a playlist that I created for you, but in terms of my theory about Toadette, here's how it goes. So originally, Princess Peach was referred to as Princess Toadstool, and it makes sense, right? Peach is related to the Toad, she's the princess of all of them, sort of like the figurehead for the Toads who live in the Mushroom Kingdom. She is who they idolize and protect, because Peach is obviously prone to getting kidnapped by Bowser. You see, in many Mario titles, Toads being used as security for Princess Peach, to make sure that Bowser can't get to her. And it almost always fails, but I mean, that's the reason why we play these games in the first place, isn't it? However, while we have yet to have seen this in any Mario title, this is where the theorization comes in. What if Toadette and this Peachette character that is accessible through the Super Crown is another form of protecting the princess. In Super Mario Odyssey, Toadette appears in Peach's castle, so Toadette is obviously given lots of free reign within the Mushroom Kingdom to be in Peach's castle and distribute stars to Mario like this. She's obviously a very important character to the princess, so Toadette acts like this stunt double of Princess Peach in a situation where Peach has to be protected so that the princess will not have to be kidnapped by Bowser. Toadette instead will be the character who gets kidnapped in this instance as Peachette looks identical to Princess Peach but they're obviously different characters as Toadette and Peach have been seen on the same screen together multiple times in the Mario series. Because of how close Toadette and Peach are it makes sense why Peach would trust Toadette in her place at times being the stunt double she wouldn't just be there in case of protection purposes and being kidnapped by Bowser she may have to do some of Peach's deeds in the castle when Peach is out playing sports or something. There are many theories about Mario lore concerning Toadette, but that is my theory about it. I've heard many others, and I'm really encouraging you to leave yours in the comment section down below. Just a mini theory about why this character exists in the Mario universe. I felt that I had to share one because this is a brand new character being introduced in the Mario universe, and we don't see too many of those in titles where all of the lore was already established for. New Super Mario Bros. 
2 was already a game which had a story that surrounded Peach's Castle being taken over by Bowser, and if Toadette was not at Peach's Castle at the time, it would make sense why she would still be able to use some of Peach's abilities by transforming into her when she's going to rescue her. But that's enough of Mario lore, let's get into the possible real reason as to why this was done. Obviously, this artificially creates the feeling of more content being added into the game. Nintendo throwing a curveball like this and introducing a brand new character that nobody has seen before and a new aspect about Toadette, who was an established character in the Mario universe ever since 2003's Double Dash, really gets some people wondering about this, it gets a lot of people talking, and it puts more eyes on New Super Mario Bros. U, probably a reason why it was the most viewed out of the three major trailers that Nintendo posted following the Direct. Lots of buzz is being created about this Peachette character, and it makes sense as to why Nintendo would want to do something like this, it just gets more publicity for it. Concerning the new content aspect of this point, it obviously makes people more inclined to purchase the game to play as this brand new character. A character who shows abilities unique to the rest of the characters in the game who all have the same movesets as each other as Peach in 2D Mario games and even 3D Mario titles, she is shown to have a more unique moveset where she can use her dress to temporarily hover for example. In terms of this game, she'll automatically get boosted out of any pits that she happens to fall into. Kinda reminds me of Funky Kong creating an easy mode for the game, am I right? All I can say is that if you're expecting something from Nintendo, don't because they're known to throw many curveballs, and when the rumor for New Super Mario Bros. U coming to the Switch stated that there would be new characters being included within this, I didn't really think that an entirely new character was going to be included, and when Toadette got revealed, I thought that was, okay, you know what, sort of expected, but then this came out of nowhere. But in terms of all the other Mario stuff that was in the Direct, we're gonna go kinda rapid fire with this, but let's get into it right now. Luigi's Mansion 3 was the first thing that was revealed in the Direct, and it was a great reveal to kick it off. It got me very excited to see this series in HD after Nintendo really kinda ripped off all the Luigi's Mansion fans when they announced that they were remaking the game for the 3DS. I'm gonna talk about 3DS stuff and how it's dying and all that in another video, but it was clear that fans wanted a Luigi's Mansion in HD and that's exactly what Nintendo is giving them here and it looks really good from the footage that we've seen so far. I'm looking forward to hearing more information about this game in the future. We got another update on Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, more specifically the Bowser Jr's journey of it. It looks like it's just going to be another mode like the Bowser's Minions mode that we got in the Superstar Saga remake, which I'm sure everybody was expecting out there. I think you're gonna get much more of that out of this, but the Bowser's Inside Story remake looks like a fun thing. It was my favorite out of all the Mario and Luigi titles, and I'm excited to play it on the release date which got revealed, which is January the 11th, also the same release date as New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. And hold on, can we talk about that for a second? The original rumor for New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe stated that it was going to be released in October, and that made sense to strengthen Nintendo's holiday lineup. But now we get the information that it's going to be releasing in January? January? Nintendo's releasing two Mario games in January? Mario games that are expected to sell decently well? But then I remembered, Nintendo doesn't really want to fall short compared to the other consoles in January. Those are the consoles that are going to be getting games like Resident Evil 2 and Kingdom Hearts 3, which are both releasing in January, and I don't think that Nintendo wants to lose out to those guys in that kind of a month. See, game companies are getting a little bit smarter. They know that nobody's releasing anything in January, early parts of the year, because they're all trying to take advantage of the holiday sales. So then they go to January to release some games to take advantage of that open market, but now Nintendo has to release some of their games in there to compete with that. I think it's just good news for gaming fans because we're going to be getting game releases spread more throughout the year. Anyways, let's get back to the Mario stuff in the Direct. We did get more information about the Luigi's Mansion port onto the Nintendo 3DS. Not too much significant there though. Mario Tennis Aces version 2.0 update. We got information about Paratroopa, Diddy Kong, and Birdo coming to the game. And we had heard about that prior to this, but I don't believe that we heard about Petey Piranha. And that's something that's very interesting to me. The fact that we get to play as one of those bosses from the Mario Tennis Aces campaign is going to be very fun. I'd love to see how PD Piranha is going to work in the main gameplay here. We got another trailer for Super Mario Party later on in the Direct, and I've got to say I love the direction that this game is going. Not just the fact that they're restoring Mario Party to its former glory by putting it in the classic board game style, but some of the boards look really fun, and I also love the mechanic of character-specific dice blocks, where the character select screen now actually means something in Mario Party, 
for the first time. And the last Mario related thing is that we finally got information related to Yoshi's Crafted World. This is the name of the Yoshi 2018 title which was revealed at E3 2017. You know what, considering that Yoshi's Woolly World was delayed, it didn't surprise me too much that this game was going to be delayed as well, and it does look really nice in terms of graphics. Yoshi games always tend to do this, and this game is definitely not disappointing. I may pick this one up just for the graphics alone, although the gameplay does look fun. The cardboard art style and everything about it just is amazing to me. You know, while this direct wasn't the greatest, it definitely did give me hope for Nintendo's next next year, and with all the games that we already have confirmed for it, it just looks great. Let me know which one you're looking forward to the most, and check out my previous video talking about New Super Mario Bros. U for my full thoughts on that game coming to the Switch, and remember to subscribe for more Nintendo videos coming really soon. Thank you so much for watching.